of a Lake Thomas called Duke, with an imaginary troublesome brother, Ernest, and a beautiful 18-year-old ward, Cecily. In the city, he is known as Ernest Worthing. The only person who discovers this is his best friend, Algernon Moncrief, a young gentleman who is a little short on cash and is constantly hungry. <laughs> Algie has an imaginary friend, Bunbury, who is always sick, providing an excuse for visiting the country frequently and making him one of the most advanced Bunbury of the day mentioned. She prepared, as usual, to take the baby out in its perambulator, that's baby carriage, to us. She had also with her an old but capacious handbag in which she had intended to place a manuscript of a work of fiction. In a moment of mental abstraction, for which she shall never forgive herself, she deposited the manuscript in the bassinet and placed the baby in the handbag and dropped it off at a cloakroom of a railway station. That baby was Jack Worthing whose real name is Ernest. So, I guess he really did learn the importance of being Ernest, didn't he? <laughs> Did you hear what I was playing, Lane? I didn't think it polite to listen, sir. I'm sorry for your sake. I don't play accurately. Anybody can play accurately. But I play with wonderful expression. <laughs> as far as the piano is concerned, sentiment is my forte. I keep signs for life. <laughs> yes, sir. Speaking of signs for life, have you got the cucumber sign with this cup for Lady Bracknell? Yes, sir. By the way, Lane, I see on your book on Thursday night when Lord Sherman and Mr. Worthing were dining with me, eight bottles of champagne were having been entered being consumed. Yes, sir, eight bottles and a pint. Why is it that every batch is establishment that the servants invariably drink the champagne? I ask merely for information. I attribute it to the, to the superior quality of the wine, sir. I've often observed that in married households, the champagne is Rarely of a first rate ground. <laughs> Good heavens, is marriage so demoralizing as that? <laughs> I mean, it is a very pleasant state, sir. I've had very little experience of myself up to the present. I've only been married once. That was in consequence of a misunderstanding between myself and a young person. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't think I'm much interested in your family life, Lane. <laughs> no, sir. It is not a very interesting subject. I never think of myself. Very natural, sir. Sure. That will do, Lane. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Lane views of marriage somewhat lax. Really, if the law orders don't set us a good example, what on earth is the use of them? They seem as a class that absolutely have no moral responsibility. <laughs> Mr. Honest Worthing. Dear Uncle Jack, so very serious. Sometimes he's so serious, I think he can't be quite well. Your guardian, guardian enjoys the best of health. And his gravity of demeanor is especially to be commended, when so comparatively young as he is. I know no one who has a higher sense of duty and responsibility. I suppose that is why he often looks so bored when we here are together. <laughs> Child, your guardian enjoys the best of health. And his gravity of demeanor is especially to be commended. You must remember his constant anxiety by the unfortunate young man, his brother. I wish Uncle Jack would allow the unfortunate young man, his brother, to come down here once in a while. We might have a good influence over him, Miss Prism. I'm certain you would. You know German and geology and things like that influence a young man very much. I do not think that even I could produce any effect that, according to his own brother's admission, is irretrievably weak and vacillating. I'm not in favor of this modern mania for turning bad people into good people. At a moment's notice, a man sows to let him reap. Put away your diary, Cecily. I really don't see why you should keep a diary at all. And by all accounts, an unfortunate young man and his brother. But I must have Mr. Egeria and her pupil any longer. Egeria? My name is Letitia, Doctor. A classical illusion, ma'am. He's promised to take it off. I shall see you both, no doubt, at evening time. I think, dear doctor, I shall have that stroll with you after all. 
It turns out I have a slight headache after all. <laughs> a walk might do it good. With pleasure, Miss Prism, with pleasure. We might go as far as the school for that. That would be delightful. Cecily, in my absence, you will read your political economy. The chapter on the fall of Ruby. You may admit it is somewhat too sensational. Even these metallic problems have their melodramatic side. Mr. Runa Swabbing has just driven over from the station. He has brought his luggage with him. Mr. Ernest Worthing, B4, Albany, W. Uncle Jack's brother. Did you tell Mr. Worthing was in town? Yes, miss. He seemed very much disappointed. I mentioned that you and Miss Prism were in the garden. He said that he was anxious to speak to you privately for a moment. Ask Mr. Ernest Worthing to come here. I suppose we'd better talk to the housekeeper about a room for him. Yes, miss. I have never met any really wicked person before. <laughs> I'm rather frightened. I'm so afraid he'll look just like everyone else. <laughs> Pray, let me introduce myself. <laughs> My name is Cecily Kadu. Cecily Kadu? What a very sweet name. Something tells me we are going to be great friends. I like you already more than I can say. My first impressions of people are never wrong. <laughs> How nice of you to like me so much after we've known each other in such a comparatively short time. <laughs> Pray, sit down. I may call you Cecily, may I not? <laughs> Pleasure. And you will always call me Gwendolyn, won't you? If you wish. Then it is all quite settled, is it not? I hope so. <laughs> quite sure. In fact, I'm going to be his. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Dearest Gwendolyn, there is no reason why I should make it a secret of you. Our small county newspaper is sure to chronicle the fact next week. <laughs> Mr. Ernest Wedding and I are engaged to be married. My darling Cecily, I fear there must be some slight error. Mr. Ernest Worthing is engaged to me. The announcement will appear in the Morning Post on Saturday at the latest. I'm afraid you must be under some misconception. Ernest proposed to me exactly ten minutes ago. <laughs> it is my darling Cecily, I fear there must be some slight error. Mr. Ernest Worley is engaged to me. If you care to verify the incident, pray do so. I never travel without my darling now. It might make you very unwell. You can hardly have forgotten that someone very closely connected with you was very nearly carried off in Paris this week by a severe chill. Yes! <laughs> but you said yourself that your severe chill was not hereditary. It used to be, I know. But science is always making wonderful improvements on things. <laughs> oh, that is nonsense. You're always talking nonsense. I wish you wouldn't. Only two left. I told you, I was particularly fond of muffins. But I hate cheese. <laughs> Then why do you allow the gate to be served up for your guests? What ideas you have of hospitality? Algernon, I already told you to go. I don't want you here. Why don't you go? Well, I have not quite finished my tea yet. And there's still one muffin left. <laughs> <laughs>